And one of the things I want to say about this bedroom is we made the decision to make it half and half. So we have a male side and we have a female side because I don't want any parent to think that it's not going to happen to their child. My nephew died of a fentanyl overdose in January 2016. Um, I know the difficulty his parents are, are having and really the entire family. It's, it's a struggle. As a mother of a recovering heroin addict, I missed a lot of the signs. I did not see those signs. As addicts, we become very, very good at that. It becomes second nature to hide, to sneak, to steal, to lie, and things like that. So, so this is an enormous problem, an enormous challenge. And we really have to fight it uh, from every direction wanted to use addicts to give ideas of where and what to hide because every addict has a different hiding place. Every addict has a different um, way of doing things. So when you get multiple addicts together to try and create a room like this, you know, a lot of different ideas combine, a lot of different ways to hide things combine. There was 190 deaths in, from 2012 to 2015. And when you say 190 deaths, a lot of people can't conceptualize that. It's even from when I was using until now, it's gotten three times as bad as it, as it was before. And it just keeps getting worse. And the worst part about it is, you know, me, more people are dying from this and younger people are dying from this. And that's, that's the terrifying part. So we put this shoe uh, display together to show, like, this is what 190 people look like. We spent about $30 billion a year on a war on drugs and I hate to report, it's not working. So, so this is time for complete rethinking, but from my standpoint, the number one component of the solution here is addressing the demand side. Community and treatment and schools and government, when everyone starts working together, that's when we'll finally start to make a difference.